Hello, sisters of strength, friends, community. We are so excited to be here today. This is Pastor Kristen, our discipleship pastor here at Fountain City United Methodist Church. I'm Donna, the director of children's uh, ministry here. And we are here with Advent. Last week, we shared hope. We lit the hope candle. And you know, hope, there's power in hope. There's so much power in hope. So in Jesus Christ. Yes. In Jesus Christ. So what's our next candle, Kristen? Well, let's, let's think about the hope just one more second, though. We get that hope and we live that out because we can read the prophets, right? Oh, Isaiah and Micah. That oh. tell you about the Messiah that's coming, the long-awaited, expected Jesus, Emmanuel, Christ with us. And so sometimes the candle is called the prophetic candle or the prophecy candle. But I really do like the hope candle because that's what it means. And so not only are the prophets saying that, but now we're supposed to say that as we start Advent, that Jesus is coming, let us prepare the way, let us share that with others. So I hope that you were sharing that with others last week. And then we get to the second purple candle. And it is my understanding that in the tradition of Fountain City United Methodist Church, this was called the candle of love, love, which I've heard that one before to you. And I've also heard that it's called the candle of faith. And it just happens to be that in our book we're using as reference, Hope, the Advent Journey, um, which you do not have to have to join us, but it's good if you want to read along. It says it's the candle of faith. But here's the deal. We have faith in Jesus Christ and his only son, our Lord. So our love for others. In God, in Jesus. I, I think I said that wrong, Donna, but we have faith in God and his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And that empowers us, moves us. After we accept the love of God through Jesus, we will offer that love to others. And then our faith. And that in. is your faith showing. Our faith is born out of our love for Christ and our acceptance for Christ. Right. Once we have that encounter, that personal mm -hmm. encounter, and we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, then the faith is born out of that love, that love that he had for us and that he's drawn us to him. Beautiful, Cause, beautiful. Because you believe at that point, you believe that Christ died on the cross for you and God loves you so much, right? And then knowing that impacts our faith. I know that I can go forth during difficult times because God loves me. So I have faith that's to come. So we hope we've, Made that clearer and not muddier. It's connected. It, it's connected. We're going to keep going together in different perspectives, but we went from hope to love faith, faith love, and we are here today. Let's read the scripture from Isaiah. It says this, Isaiah 61, 1 through 2. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives and freedom to prisoners, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. That's a lot. That's but a that's lot. us living out our love through faith if we proclaim these things, the good news to the afflicted. And we're all afflicted in one way or the other. Yeah. And I think for this year, here's the part that really sticks out, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. Wow. Favorable what? year. I would, not, I would not align that with 2020. Right. But you know what? We are here. Yeah. We have the ability and the technology to continue to share the good news of Jesus yeah. Christ. And we, we have our faith to get us through the difficult years, but we also know where the, we need to name it and claim it. So we proclaim that there is a favorable year. And you know, dur during, this, during this time that, that we've had the last several months, it's been so easy to, to sit at home alone or with your family mm -hmm. and to feel very insignificant. Definitely. But there is, there is back to hope mm -hmm. in the fact that the birth of Jesus Christ happened in a very small, insignificant town. 
I know. Bethlehem. And I was just wondering, Miss Donna, where were you born? Oh, I was born in Irwin, Tennessee, Unicoi County. Were you born yes. in a hospital? I was born in the little hospital that has not been there. But the time I was old enough, I guess, that I to know I was born in a hospital, it was already gone. Were you born in a hospital? I was born in a hospital in Evansville, Indiana. And, you know, I joke around with my husband because uh, we realized both of us came home to a single wide trailer after the hospital. So we, we pick on each other a little bit about that. <laughs> but there was a lot of love in, in that place and, and hope. My parents had a lot of hope. They had purchased a farm. They didn't get to stay there, but they had hope for that. And I bet your parents had a lot of hope for you when you were born. Oh, I will hope so. <laughs> yeah. And they had faith that God so. would see it through. And I think, you know, the place I was born in may seem insignificant. The place where Donna was born in may see, seem insignificant. And when we talk about East Tennessee and Donna's location, folks are like, where is that? Oh, I think a lot of local people know where Unicoi County is. Yeah, the is. local people do. Yes. But the other folks, you got to tell them. Way up in the tip, <laughs> tip, tip of Tennessee, yeah. you can go up on the... The beauty spot and see other states around, but yeah. uh, it's a beautiful little valley. That's true. It, it has the the tag of the valley beautiful. It is about four thousand people live there, and um, I, I have lived away from there mm -hmm. longer than I lived there. I lived there twenty six years, yeah. but uh, and I'm a little older than that now. But um, it takes you back to your roots. Yeah. Yep. It takes you back to your roots because there are, there are times, and about once a year, even when I lived in Florida and I would come up, uh, occasionally I would find my way because that's my, that's my roots. Yeah. That's well, where we, I went to church, where I was baptized, where I was saved. I was baptized in the, in the Nola Chucky River there. So yeah. it's your roots. But Jesus' roots were in... Jesus, the Savior of the world, right. Pastor Kristen, was out of, born well, out of Jesse's tree. The yes. shoot shall yes. arise. And we talk about roots and the importance of the birthplace. And we need to realize as far as geological or geographical location, you know, um, Jerusalem is there and Bethlehem's what we would consider what? A subdivision, an outside area outside of Jerusalem. So it wasn't the focus area. It was... It was on the side. It would be the strawberry plains to the Knoxville right. or something of that nature. I'm not trying to lessen Bethlehem. I'm just trying to get us to wrap our minds around how insignificant it seemed to appear. And Jesus was not only born in Bethlehem, an insignificant place. He was born in an insignificant place within Bethlehem. Yes. In a stable, in yeah. a manger. So he was out, born outside the norm and then outside the outside. And sometimes it's hard to have faith when you look around and see other people's situations and yours is different. I do like on page 45, if you are able to read along, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read some to you. Part of the symbolism of Jesus' life in Luke's gospel Mm -hmm. is that Jesus was never an insider, was always an outsider. And folks, I think nowadays we may be staying inside and isolated, but we feel like outsiders to the world, to what's going on. It's hard to feel mm -hmm. what's going on. You watch the news and that's varying opinions. You, you um, see church through a television screen, screen and it's hard to feel it, but we know that God's presence abounds. And all that involves us having faith, doesn't it? Oh, it absolutely does. And then the fact that, that the prophecies for hundreds and hundreds of years before mm -hmm. came to fruition. And that is our hope. Yeah. That's our hope because it put Jesus, it, it puts us all level, yeah. equal. Yeah. We, feel, we can feel an equality because if Jesus had been born in a great, uh, a great, I don't know, palace or something, we could. We would have felt immediately. Yeah, that we, we can't couldn't achieve identify. that. Yeah, we, we couldn't don't identify understand with that. that. You don't know where I'm coming from, kind of thing. Well, Donna, if you'll give me the opportunity this time, I want to talk a little theology. Okay, go ahead. You run with it. 
Um, I just love, I do love hope and the, uh, the concept and the love that it gives us for Jesus. And the two things I want to mention are, um, the writer mentions Harry, Harry Nowen, and he's the wounded healer. He talks about the wounded healer. I relate a lot of my ministry to that, but he says, here's what he says. But this is exactly the announcement of the wounded healer. The master is coming, not tomorrow, but today, not next year, but this year, not after our misery is past, but in the middle of the misery, not in another place, but right here where we are standing. That's our hope, that we may be in the misery, that we may Mm -hmm. be in the difficult times, that we may be in the midst of all kinds of change, but that God is with us and walking with us and Jesus is with us. Emmanuel, God is with us. He's letting us know that he is present. And I love the idea of the wounded healer because I think we've all been wounded in different ways, haven't we? Wounded and broken and like Isaiah says there in uh, chapter 53, verse 5, Isaiah reminds us, and this is is huge because sometimes we we begin to think we're all in it on our own and we can't be fixed. But then... Isaiah says, he was pierced because of our rebellions and crushed because of our crimes. He bore the punishment that made us whole. Mm -hmm. By his wounds, we are healed. So So our wounds are healed by his wounds. Yes. And thus, then we become part and have the opportunity to be the wounded healer as well to testify to that. And as you go on to thinking about that, um, it does reference Moltmann. He's another theologian. Um, But these folks really, really looked into the depths of hope. And that's why I just, I love reading about them. But here's the idea. He gave hope to John the Baptist and reassured him of his ministry. He gave hope to the sick as he healed them and restored them of their faith. He gave hope to his disciples by teaching them to fish for people. He gave hope to a woman at the well who became the first woman evangelist in the New Testament. I like the way that's worded. He gave hope on the cross as he welcomed a criminal into paradise. And he closes with, Hope is nothing else than the expectation of those things which faith has believed to have been truly promised by God. That's a lot of words, isn't it? That's a lot of words, but it says we serve a mighty big God. And in this time, in this time that we're all living as a a new, every day is a new adventure. One thing that has become glaring is that God is bigger than our church building. Amen. He's bigger than our church building. He's bigger than our man-made traditions that we have created. And that, that's a blessing because we can see it. Yeah. We can see it as there's hope. There's hope for us to come back right. together and to create and recreate if we have to. But God is bigger mm-hmm. than what we face. Somebody said today, they said, I just want us to get back to where we were in worship in the church. And I said, oh, yeah, me too. And then I said, no, I want to get to where God wants us to be in worship in the church and be the church. And I have hope that we will get there. And the church was, this is a place to come. The church is to be out in the world. So we hope this week that you will continue to walk with us, but more importantly, you will continue to walk with God and know that no matter where you've been or what you've done or what's going on or how you feel, that God is present, God loves you and is seeking you and seeking a relationship with you. And through that relationship, God offers hope, restores us to a love that we could not compare to anything else. And through that love, we offer faith to others, so... Please go forth this day in hope, love, and faith. And share this. Share this with others. If you have friends, tell them to tune in. We would love to hear that. Yes. Thank you all. Bye-bye.